so nice to see you on this beautifully warm evening. Um, it is. Could we get somebody to confirm that you can hear what we're saying? Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you. That was a lovely intro, by the way, Rich. Thanks. I actually just found a videotape that was a transfer from 16 millimeter uh, hand drawn cell animation from probably when Jess was born. <laughs> and I might play that if I if I um, if I can work up the the nerve. My first film was called Cans. My second film was called Professor Dink's New Head. All right. So, before we begin, um, we would like to acknowledge that the land we gather on, open is the ancestral territory of the Siksikai, Sitki, the Siksikai, Guyana, the Pekingese, and the Amska Pekingese. We acknowledge all Treaty 7 signatories, including the Sutena people, as well as the Iarhe, Nakoda Nations, Verspa, Chiniki, and Wesley. This land is also the home of Métis Nation, Region 3, and all others who call this place home. Um, it is Indigenous History Month and Pride Month. And um, it's a tough month. It's a hard month. So be gentle with yourself and with each other. And uh, we're going to look, and we're going to spin the wheel, we're going to look at some art. And um, yeah. Yeah, it's really nice to see you. Um, so we, we spin the wheel here. Actually, I'll put this as a first piece of inspiration. Um, so I think. Okay, so the very first piece of inspiration comes to us from um, Chief R. Stacy Laforme, Living in the Tall Grass, Poems of Reconciliation. Um, sorry, I just- Do you remember what we did about reading with him? Oh yeah, and yeah. Then they wanted to go for dinner afterwards, but we were like bagged. As yeah, like, we just couldn't we're... keep up. Yeah, we were doing something before, and then that really is one of those dinners I really missed out on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, I keep. Re you know, I guess I could just read one of the many that I just started reading right now. Um, <laughs> sorry. So nothing grows in shadow. Perfect and innocent is the way life began. Lonely and afraid is how I might end. I lived my childhood without a care until the beginning of a private nightmare. I love the first rays of light, but how I hate the horror of night. I didn't know where to go or what to do. A mother who looked away and a father who is you. I live with such guilt and shame, but I shouldn't own it. I wasn't to blame. Though I am grown and hold my head high, a shadow of a man still traps me inside. I never became the soul I should have been because nothing grows in the shadow of a fiend. Sick. That is from Chief R. Stacy Laforme, Living in the Tall Grass. Our second piece of inspiration comes to us from, um, we just bought this from our friend Derek. He did the illustrations. Um, so searching for Marilyn Monroe. I just opened it. On the Path is called. On the Path, enveloped by forest traveled the congregation for the most protracted time they moved in accord with eyes observing forward 
He moved along with the circle as he always had before, a constant eye on the unnamed unfolding aisle. So on the path is our next piece of inspiration, which reminds me now that we're, we're thinking of um, uh, everything that's been going on, it reminded me of the secret path um, too. So lots of different um, inspirations coming up tonight and, and let us know if you guys are um, making art with us um, and then the last piece of inspiration comes to us from Rob Bresney someone who um, kind of gives us hope as as we work through the work week he gives us little piece of inspiration on Tuesdays and then by Wednesdays we have the rumble so we can make it usually to Thursday and by Thursday generally things are looking up because the next day is Friday. So um, so we have the first piece of inspiration is nothing grows in shadow. The second piece of inspiration is on the path. And the third piece of inspiration. Have a good night. Is evil is boring. When an old tree in the rainforest dies and topples over, it takes a long time to decompose. As it does, it becomes host to new saplings that use the decaying log for nourishment. Picture yourself sitting in the forest, gazing upon the scene. How do you describe it? Would you dwell on the uh, putrefaction of the fallen tree while ignoring the fresh life sprouting out of it? You pronounce putrefaction on. Putrefaction? Um, it's pronounced protrefusion. Action. No, I'm just making that. Uh, if you did, you'd that, be that would be my idea. Funny, Jessica. Imitating the perspective of many modern storytellers, especially the journalists and novelists and filmmakers and producers of TV dramas, they devoutly believe that tales of affliction, oh, future fraction, my, my mistake, and mayhem and corruption and tragedy are inherently more interesting than tales of triumph and liberation and pleasure and ingenuity. Using the juggernaut of the media and entertainment industries, they relentlessly propagate this covert dogma. It's not sufficiently profound or well thought out um, to be called nihilism. Pop nihilism is a more accurate term. The mass audience is the victim of this inane ugliness, brainwashed by a multi-billion dollar propaganda machine that is, in comparison, makes Himmler's vaunted soul-stealing apparatus look like a child's backyard puppet show. This is the engine of the phenomenon I call the global genocide of the imagination. At the Beauty and Truth Lab, we believe that stories about the rot are not inherently more captivating than stories about the splendor. On the contrary, given how predictable and ubiquitous they are, stories about the rot are actually quite dull. Obsessing on evil is boring. Rousing fear is a hackneyed shtick. Wallowing in despair is a bad habit. Indulging in cynicism is akin to committing committing a copycat crime. <sighs> so being I think I need a code. able to see the the beauty. Can um, you come and type it in rather than say it on the okay? Sure. Not that we don't trust people, but here it sort of defeats the purpose of the code. Sorry, I'm really slow tonight, like slower Can you just take that? Oh, then I have to do this. Okay. Sorry, one second. Okay. So we have nothing grows in the shadow on the path and ugliness is boring so to share stories of beauty and triumph and hopefully we can start building some stories of triumph um, and working togetherness in this in this place here that's why I love all of you watching I think you have helped us build we've all built together something pretty pretty lovely sorry I might need another call Is it possible? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's another photo. Sorry. Yeah. 
If you see my purple water bottle right here, can you find it? I just don't know where it is. Oh. Huh? Rich, my purple water bottle's right there. Okay. Can I give you a pink one? <laughs> what? It's not good enough? I just don't like this. You want the sale of my pink water bottle? I just don't like the pink. That's all. Thank you. I don't know if you like these or not. Do it now. That's really sweet. Cool. Where's, where's yours? Oh, okay. I was looking. A long one, about seven inches of marker. That's a good, uh, that's a good, um. Seven inches isn't up to your knee, so that's good. I took out 125 feet of fencing this weekend. And then. We uh, took out 125 feet of sod and uh, filled up. Where did the fencing go? <laughs> huh? Where did the fencing go? Um, some of it's going to go back into the ground as a, like a, what do you call it? I don't remember what it's called. Like a retaining wall. A retaining wall, yeah. We're going to put, um, mulch down after we put in the shrubs um, saskatoon bushes so. oh, all right hold the sound did the sound just get way better are we okay anybody i could hear it pretty clearly <laughs> okay <laughs> sounds <laughs> good thank did you did it get better did it change at all uh just a little bit yeah that's our expensive mic. Okay. All right. So number one comes to us from A Locks. We'll start out with. I have to sit outside. Yeah. Wear your sunscreen. I'll come in once in a while. So number one comes to us from A Locks. Sussy Minx. Sussy Minx. Opening bid ten dollars. And. So number one, so I'm going to be putting all of these pieces up on the um, event page. Uh, if I can find it. One of these days. I am really slow today, I apologize. Most of the time. Okay. Okay, so I will be posting all of the pictures of the work in the event page for people to peruse. Oh, no, I'm ready. I started. Yeah. So number one is by Alox. That is opening bid ten dollars. Number one. Thank you, Amanda, for sharing the page. And did you send a link to? Viviana? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this Did is she the, ask for one? Yeah. No, I mean like just now. Yeah. 7.15. She just asked for one? 7.15. She, yeah. She said she didn't. Is she, which account is she on? E, e Viviana. I sent her. There's also a link on the health center. Okay. Number two comes to us from Alox. Looks like Wednesday, Adam. To me. Oh, and it's Wednesday. That's so nice. <laughs> Opening bid twenty dollars. Let's 
So number two by Alox Acrylic. And there's some canvas. Opening bid, $20. And the third one was from last week. I'll put this one in too. Just to get it going. Number three is by Alox as well. Another saucy lady here. with her stripey outfit. Opening bid $20. So number three by Alox, acrylic and aerosol on canvas. Opening bid, $20. Okay. We got. I had two potential ideas for tonight. Yeah. Um, and I'm just trying to figure out if they both fit the Rumble thing perfectly. Mm. Number four comes to us from Dusty. Double trouble. Little raccoons. Opening bid, forty dollars. Have you ever had vitamin water before? I don't think so. Are you excited. Number four by Dusty Double Trouble. Opening bid, forty dollars. Am I healthy now? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I am just Cornell, thirsty for I can tell water, from your body water. language. Sorry, that I'm just. No thanks. I'm thir sorry. I'm. I'm just like. You're thirsty, thirsty for your purple containers, which you are. Where is it? It's right straight ahead by the Lysol. Actually, thank you. Pipes. Crikey! Thank you. You're welcome. You better see me put that up. Show me to just put them away. Oh, they smell good. Okay. Number four by Dusty Gomery Acrylic on Canvas, Double Trouble. Opening bid, $40. And, ooh. Do you know what's special about today? <laughs> special about today it's 720 yeah it's wednesday the what june first second second i muted my mic before i logged in oh that's wonderful know, right? so this is number five by jessica armasnoda metallic Opening bid, $40. That mic is so powerful, you can actually hear the birds in the background. Really? That's lovely. We have the door open for the fresh air. I'm going to open the back door, too. Sure. Yes, yeah, nice. Very lovely. So happy together. And number six, we have Viviana Pacheco. 
So this is what she was working on last week on the live feed. Acrylic on canvas. And then you have the whole documentation of her making it. If you look at the lovely video from last week. So here we go. So it's called one can, two can. Ha ha ha. On the back. By Viviana Pacheco. Opening bid, $60. <laughs> that was a good dinosaur one. What? That was, oh. That was a good dinosaur noise. That was a drop me from the Conte noise. You get a good. You get a good photo here of the colors. Number six by Viviana. Oh. Checo acrylic on canvas. Wow. I just got the most intense urge to go to San Francisco. Is it the birds? Maybe. Maybe because we were talking about good um um uh, the restaurant in LA and then you start thinking about California. No, I think it's birds. Birds? That's yeah. nice. I do remember in Gorilla one time. Mm -hmm. It was one of those moments where everything was slow and quiet and easy. Yes. And uh, I remember suddenly realizing how just that one spot right outside of Gorilla House mm -hmm. felt so much like San Francisco. And I really like, I love that space so much. It was true. I remember when the weather was like this out there. Was really nice. Right? Especially like, because it was always so hectic there, mm -hmm. right? And in those moments where it wasn't hectic, mm -hmm. like if you had the place to yourself. Mm -hmm. Or there was just like a moment of silence. Oh, okay. Sorry. Start thinking about things. Okay. Start thinking Oops. about what? I started thinking. I got like my brain just so slow. So this number seven is by day one. And so we're going to be donating whatever is made from this painting. We're going to be donating the proceeds to um, our dear friend Chris. Um, so and there also is a print of a poster he made here that we'll send with. Okay. So um, yeah. Yeah. Opening bid is $75. And all proceeds will be going to the artist. So day one um, uses different imagery from um, hip hop and indigenous history and culture. Um, so he, um, I've been seeing him posting about how he misses going. He would live paint at um, like hip hop shows and various events um, all over Alberta. So I hope, and like, and the state. So um, I know he's just so like really excited to get back into the live painting. He's been working on such great series lately. So um, this is one of his pieces and um, inspired from his live painting shows. And yeah, there we go, number seven. I think there's someone in the waiting room. Is that okay, can you do me a favor? Can you keep an eye on where your screen is, or do you want me to change it? Like, go back to where you were? Yeah. To see how I have the letters on this side? Yeah. So can you move into the frame? I was just taking a picture. Of that. I know, but 
if you move that chair there, yeah, and you get up and you move that way, try and stay in this frame. There. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Acrylic on canvas. Can I ask you a question? Yep. If I tell you uh, that I need to just stay over there, does it sound like I'm like scolding you or? You no, I was just or? taking a picture, so I was like. I know, but I'm just like I'm, tr I'm not know. trying to be like passive aggressive or anything. I'm just like. Trying to figure out the best way to say this is what I need to do. You know what I mean? Like, what's the best way to express that? I understand so what you come mean. Off like, uh, like I'm telling you what to do. I understand what you're saying, though. I don't know. You don't. You're not coming off anyway. Everything is awesome. Hmm. This one's a good one for today. Ice Cream Chronicles by Ryan. What's it called? Ice Cream Chronicles. Right. Did you ever read the Basketball Diaries? I did not. I didn't read very much before, so I have to catch up on a lot of stuff. I didn't start reading until I was 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I am. Um, I never read complete things. I read stuff well, to past tests. Well. All right, number eight by Brian. And we see Ryan there is making art with us. So yeah, I didn't introduce all the people here. We have Viviana. Is that Viviana? Yes. And we have Yay! Hi Viviana. <laughs> and then we have Hello. Ryan working um there. And then we have Kelly and Theo. And then that is the Rich Cam at the top there. So these are our amazing friends joining us here. And this is one of Ryan, so it's called Ice Cream Chronicles. Opening bid is $4.20 by Ryan. Acrylic on canvas board. We have Galen at the front, yeah. bouncing. Mm. <laughs> What's he been doing? Oh, what did you say? Sorry, I was... How's he been doing? We haven't seen him in a while, or heard him yeah, in a while. Been, he's been teaching and so busy. I would say surviving Good. teachings probably the uh, Yeah, surviving. That's good. Mm -hmm. So we got Millie the Moose. What's the name? Millie. So she has cute little flowers and dry and butterflies in her hair and her antlers. And probably glowing eyeballs and UV reactive everything. So, you know, it's springtime. It's finally feeling so lovely. So, opening bid is $75. Lovely little springtime moose. There we go. Oh, I guess I should leave that on for picture. I hope, this is a weird thing to hope, I actually hope it's a little bit quiet tonight and that everybody's out for a walk or a bike ride. And as it cools off, they all show up and come to the auction. Yeah. Mm, that'd be pretty awesome, hey? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I really, more than anything, I want people to be out and about walking tonight. It's an excellent night to get some good walk in. Mm -hmm. Where do you walk, Viviana? 
Oh, generally the dog park. <laughs> the dog park. Well, uh, we go to the one, there's one by Canadian Tire. Um, it's pretty flat and there's not too many exposed dirt areas where my dog can roll around and she, I call her roly poly because she basically takes three steps and then rolls and takes another three steps and then rolls and sniffs around and then rolls in that, whatever it is. That's where the other dogs sort of poop. Well, yeah, or pee or whatever, you know, like whatever delicious smells she thinks she's smelling. I don't know. It's kind of creepy and disgusting, but she loves to roll. And so um, we tend not she's to go. Kind of we used to go to Edworthy. Pardon? Is she the kind of dog that licks your face? Uh, no. Oh, God, no, I don't let her lick my face. But she she has tried and we scream and run away. <laughs> I really find those people that kiss their dogs strange. I, I, you know what? I love her and I kiss her on the top of the forehead and, you know, play with her ears and give her lots of belly scratches and lots of them. But the fact that she's just, well, she's actually now too chunky to lick herself, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> just, you know, because, yeah, reasons, you know. But I'm not even kidding. She is actually too chubby now. It's like she's, she's a beagle. Pardon? I said if she's rolling in the other dog's stuff at the dog park. Yeah. Well, I just, yeah, I kind of avoid the, the licking the face part. Um, it's never been my thing, but, I mean, I love her. She's the sweetest thing some days. She's upstairs <laughs> sleeping, so she's pretty sweet right now. That's cute. There are days, oh. though. How old is your dog? Seven. What kind of dog is it? A beagle. A beagle. How long do beagles Beagle. Live? Beagles mix with something. I don't know. She'll live a long time just to spite me. <laughs> 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 you know, because she's a beagle and she's crazy. And so she's like, yep, I'm going to give it all. Part of me loves beagles because Snoopy was a beagle. Mm -hmm. That's why we got her. She was very, we call her Snoopy girl too. She's got many nicknames. Oh my goodness. Number 11. Was it there? Oliver. Number 11 comes from Jennifer Waters. Acrylic on canvas. We have Corey Park opening $80. Oh, that's pretty. I know. I really like the. Shadows. I don't know, but I think my gumbo machine is lopsided because I'm sitting lopsided. <laughs> you know when you do that? Yeah. Hi. Oh, man. Stop that bad. You know what that means? That means you're the new security. Oh, did you switch over to benches? Yeah. When did that? No, did you? Yeah, I did. Because you look like you've got some sun. Yeah. That's nice. When did you? Uh, Monday. I did my last <laughs> last week at work at Sandin's. Um, and then the day after, went to bed. Awesome. So what do you need help with? Nothing. just missed you. So you need help? Well, at the time, I didn't know Galen was coming. Oh. And then I wasn't sure when they were coming. But I, what I did need help with was um, you kind of need a greeter at the door to, they'll want to know like when they can come in and when we're reopening and all that kind of thing. Or you could just go finish that painting. Okay. The, uh, that canvas I gave you. That was cool. Yeah. Cause or I, the board that you're looking at. I'm probably going to redo it. We'll go, re go redo it. over it, you can. Are you reading my uh, refresh? Here, there's this right here. Go grab your candy and do some work. <laughs> no, don't give my red ones away. Did you give my red ones away? <laughs> he needs to keep his blood sugars up in this hot heat. It's funny, I put the red ones away because he's like, stop me from myself. And then he opened the black ones. <laughs> <laughs> Rip them out of my hands. <laughs> Right. He's like, how did you get another bag? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got his other hand full of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Number 12 comes to us from Arthur. I really like the little, little, little dog. 
Okay. Are you going to uh, stick around, Oliver? Um, Opening bid, $10. Bye. For a second. I'll pick up on the next Actually, that was Galen giving it to us. Thank you, Galen, for the vitamin water. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody here have a gumball machine? I had one as a kid. Uh, yay. I love it. Yeah, I have one. It's got, it's got jelly beans and it's got those sour cherries in it right now. Oh, I love sour cherries. <laughs> I know. And it's hilarious. It's my incentive to the for the kids to behave sometimes. So... They love the sour cherries the most. But that's what I decided to do with my gumball machine today. Just because it's so cute and everybody seems to love it. And they're like, where'd you get a gumball machine from? Because it looks like, you know, the old-fashioned ones that you had at the store or whatever. Did you have to put money in it? Yeah, you have to put money in it. You can't get candies out otherwise. And, well, I, I you know. It's like it doubled as a piggy bank. Yeah, it for this one does. I uh, went. What? what uh, how much did we get the first time we ever opened it up? We took a few years, and it had fifty three dollars or something in it. That's awesome. When I was yeah. a young man, I was saving to go to Europe. Uh huh. It was I? Uh, I took a globe and I punched a hole in it, and then I taped it shut. So I just had a little slot that I couldn't put money in. Okay. And. Um, so the money would go in, and I couldn't take it out. I'd have to destroy my globe to uh, to, get to get the money that, out. To that, good. Every time I looked at it, I was like, "Oh, this is," you know, if I needed money, and I went to the globe, and like, "Well, this would be good instead of going to Ireland." Right. Yeah, with this, I can't. I think we put it in my son's bank account. Yeah. Yeah, with the money that was in there, because it well, it's. Essentially, it was his gumball machine. I think he got it for Christmas one year. Mm -hmm. But um, now it's my, if you guys all behave when we do this, <laughs> you know, you'll get a sour cherry. And it's funny because I can jiggle it sometimes and get a jelly bean to drop without putting money in it. But you do need to put money in it to get. So do like, the kids put the, their own money in well, let's just say one of them showed up with a whole bag of change one day going, this is for us to get candies. <laughs> I'm like, not all in one day, buddy. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, it was so cute, though. When it gets, like, when it's still there, like, I have, like, this little, this little, like, red baggie of change that he brought <laughs> over. And so when they're really good, they, they get to, to put money in there and turn it, and they love it. Okay. It's funny how some things are just so damn exciting. Like you just, you know, and that's them. They get so thrilled to, you know. Now we look at it and go, oh, that makes me fat every time I see all those jelly beans. <laughs> oh. Meanwhile, the kids are like, oh, I can eat 37 of them and just bounce off the walls. Oh, man. Well, maybe the problem is you don't bounce off the walls anymore. That's exactly it. That is true. I bounce off the floor if I fall, though. I'm that chunky. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Sorry. And I keep trying to look at this one text because I was going to show the next work. And Aaron um, or Brittany, if you're watching, I know Aaron sent um, to Rich a really great like write-up on um, from Brittany. And um, please resend that because I can't find I need to get better at um saving the names in the in the phone. Um so we got number 13 it's the goddess acrylic on canvas opening bid is $30 by Brittany. Yeah this really lovely spiral color and spiral. Nice. 
And I'm gonna move this back and go let the dog out. For number 13, opening bid, $30. Ooh, and there's lots of sparkles. Number 13 by Brittany. The, oi, oi. The goddess opening bid thirty dollars there my dog's now outside so any second now i'll have to get up and let her back in number 14 by steven I always get excited to see his stuff. <laughs> a lovely, a lovely yawn. Oh, for goodness sakes, look at what I just did. Oh no. Uh, with the back of my brush. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Oh my God. <sighs> I'm not sure. She is in distress. <laughs> no, I just stuck the back of my brush somehow got in my white paint and then I grabbed the back of the brush and got yeah. white paint everywhere. Yeah. And um, of course it would happen that I didn't grab a cloth today to wipe my hands on it. The only thing near me is the t-shirt that I just got for you guys. <laughs> That's a good paint shirt. That's a good paint shirt. All right. So oh, that's gorgeous. Number 14 is by Stephen Strain, Oil on Board. Yeah, I really love the shadows and the textures. Yeah, you can really see the texture from here. Oh, good, that's good. The opening yeah. is $40 for this. Gorgeous. Yeah, the fur is so nice. So oil on board, opening bid, $40. All right, here I am again for like the 20th time. Really, really, you got to stay calm. Does anybody know if Pyro Red is named after someone or is it because it looks red like fire that it's Pyro? <laughs> What brand? Oh, you know, Liquitex Basics. Oh, there's white paint. I get white paint everywhere, you guys. Oh. You find that those uh, name titles shift quite a bit from the brands you use? Yes, they do. They do seem to change a little bit, especially like Crimson and... Um, Clover? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I have to relearn those over and over. <laughs> ah, that's so perfect. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 I. Sorry. Oh. Number fifteen. Oh what? Ah, uh, I mean. This is what's like when we're driving. You're like, oh my god, and then it's like. <laughs> I feel a thump, and I'm like, did we just kill somebody? And you're like, time passes. <laughs> you start telling me about something from grade five. Because <laughs> I want to give the context. I have to give the background. Hey, is there a problem that I need to know about? Is all I want to know. Oh, no, everything's fine. <gasps> How did you know? Because uh, I think, like, I get in this, like, lulled, like, I 
pushing buttons and this and this and, this. and then I thought I posted the picture without any information, but I had not hit post yet. <laughs> that reminds me of my sister. She was very dramatic. Yeah. And and oh, uh, what's that we'd, be, like? <laughs> we'd be in the car, like you just said. You'd be in the car and then you're like she'd be like, Oh my god. And you're going, you know, like Nothing like giving somebody a heart attack <laughs> while you're driving. My sister didn't drive for years, so it was me who did all the driving. Oh, She's awesome. older than me, but she didn't have a driver's license for yeah. until she was like 38 or something. Oh, I remember my sister jumped out of a moving car <laughs> on Deerfoot. Now, it wasn't moving fast. It was just going around the corner. But I... Uh, Grasshopper, and ironically, I shouldn't tell you this because I, I know you know my sister, but she's not watching. <laughs> yeah. But here's the funny story. I was I was in the back seat because I was the younger sibling, and she was the cool one that got to sit in the front seat. Of course. And we were talking about the fact that she was scared of bugs, and she immediately flipped to this story about how she wasn't scared of bugs; she's only scared of spiders. At that split second. A grasshopper jumped through the window and into the car. Oh, boy. Yeah, it landed on her lap, and she went flying out of the vehicle. And uh, <laughs> luckily, we weren't going fast. I would have totally won that argument if it wasn't so dramatic that she jumped out of the car. <laughs> younger brothers, we don't like do the I told you so the way the older siblings do. We always look up to our older siblings and think right when they fail, so... Oh, my sister was very similar to that. We were in the pool one time, and I've never seen somebody get out of the pool so fast. And she's like, something touched my leg. And I'm like, we're in the pool. <laughs> like, Could have been any number of things. Well, we can see the right through to the bottom. Nothing touched your leg. She had watched the movie Jaws. Uh, and that was the end of, like, peaceful swimming with my sister. So I've never seen my sister. Huh? Oh, she's oh. probably scared of sharks too. <laughs> Josh, she's mentioned something like that. <sighs> okay, so we got a couple here. Watercolors. Oh, first I guess I'll show. This one is number 15 by Aaron. Good little succulent. The last of the three he dropped off in the ceramic bowl. That he made, so he says, I threw this pot at school. Not through, like, through it, like he threw it, like, built it. Um, mm -hmm. it may <laughs> he said, it may leak everywhere. That is okay. Just ignore it. In the biz of pottery, it is known as culinarily incapable. These plants need little water, so it does not matter. If it makes a mistake on your floor, that's because you gave it too much water before bed. Don't blame it. Please enjoy the succulent that comes with the pot. It's spiky, and I will miss its crude jokes. There you go. Um, Opening bid, thirty dollars for number fifteen. When you read Aaron's messages mm -hmm. in your head, do you hear his voice? Kind of, I guess. Yeah, he's on my list of people I know well enough to add their own voice to whatever I'm hearing them say. That's nice. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so we got a couple watercolors here by Sandra Heavens. Sandra here. So this is number sixteen. A really lovely waterfall. Madden, um, can I ask done. you something? Yes. Uh, are there any other waterfalls in the gallery right now? Like real waterfalls? No, paintings of waterfalls. Oh, what? Because we flooded enough times that I had to. No, but seriously, that. are there any paintings of waterfalls? I'd have to look through everything. You'd have to chase around for them? <laughs> Number 16. Can you not do that right now, though? I won't go chasing waterfalls. Really? Yeah. You are so. Oh, okay, now I get it. <laughs> Just like, where's he going? So, don't, don't. You didn't read T Boz's book. Okay. Number yeah, yeah, yeah. Or did you? Number nope. Nope. Uh, it was Robin's first book. But I'm reading one called Dumbology. 
That's good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's a lot of dumb people on the planet. Sorry. Go on. Number 16 is by Sandra, a beautiful watercolor of a waterfall that you don't have to chase. You can just buy it. Um, opening bid is $25. Oh, hey, like TLC. <laughs> just like TLC. Did you like TLC? I love TLC, I yeah. Like TLC. I know. Vicariously through my daughter. Right. right. I don't know. I, it's, there's no way for me to know if I'd like TLC if I didn't have a daughter who loved TLC. That's fair. This is number 16. By Sandra Heavens. Watercolor. Is that a real book, um, Dumbology? Paper. Yes, it is, actually. I can't think of the author right now, but it's just, yeah, it's, um, oh, yeah, we have a lot of interesting um, people who make some really weird mistakes. I was also reading one called um, the, uh, de uh, oh, gosh, I can't think of it. Dead Philosophers. Oh, and it's really interesting. It's really good. Cool. Yeah, I feel like that sort of stuff. So, Rich, you're number 17. Okay. So I'll put up for you work in progress. You don't want me to take a picture yet? No. Okay. So number 17 is by Rich Teru, work in progress. Yeah, those little birdies, they sound happy. Yeah, it's so nice. We have the big tree out front that's all green now, and there's some in the back too. So it's like surround sound birdies. Nice. Actually, that's what I miss about teaching online. <laughs> so oh. you can hear birds. Now that we're in the classroom, like I, I'm, my, I'm in a portable this year because they're using... The art room for a quarantine room and um, so I'm in a portable and there's like the windows don't really open I have to hold them up with books and you just can't hear the birds because there are no trees or anything around here oh so I'm like I miss that a lot you don't notice how much you like depend on these sounds <laughs> mm -hmm. amen So number 18 is also by Sandra Heavens. This one's opening $35. She's so lovely. So Mountain Valley. Oh, opening $35. Check the bill. All right. Number 19, we have Theo. Striped landscape with fire trees. Fire trees, I hold them down there. Fire trees? Oh, those are fire trees. <laughs> oh, cute. They are. Do you wonder who uh, started those fire trees? Oh, here we go. Are you now quoting Prodigy? <laughs> Not yet. 
fire starter. I Whoa, start am I really red? Would, I was going to start by telling blue? you that it would be a pretty twisted act oh. to um, start that fire. Number nineteen five. Would though, right? Like opening bid is thirty five dollars. What kind of twisted bastard? I was in a house, and it was uh -huh. a really old house. Oh God! About just the, this isn't a joke. This is real. Oh, I thought you were going with the, you know that song. <laughs> In the middle of the street, a house. Yes. No. Yes. Um, okay. I was in a house, and it was a really old house, and I was thinking about how old the wood was, but then I further realized, on top of the house being 100 years old, uh -huh. the wood came from a tree, and the tree would have been, you know, a couple hundred years older than that. And I was thinking about how we take for granted, even in, like, old houses... That they're made out of ancient trees. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking about, like, you know, like it takes eight minutes for the sunlight to get to Earth, and then a plant consumes the sunlight, and then an animal eats the plant, and then we eat the animal, and we end up eating this energy that came from the sun. One plant, one animal, and eight minutes away from the sun. Wow. Like embodied energy. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to get here? When did that when did the, the tree grow that became that house? Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming by. I got something well, for I you. See. What? A million dollars? What? A million dollars. <laughs> also hopeful around here. Number 20, beautiful abstract, comes to us from Anne Christine. Opening bid, $30. Acrylic on board. Oh, I really love this, the colors. All right. And acrylic on board. Opening bid thirty dollars. Like, who doesn't need beautiful flowers over their doorways in their house? What? Right? You bought the other one. It's over, over the, doorway. the doorway. It's so light, it's on foam four. Uh, and there's a bunch of hugs and kisses. Gosh. Uh, what's that I heard of? One. So this is twenty-one dollars, and we'll do opening bid twenty-one dollars. Maybe the X's and O's go this way. What's that? I'm looking at his writing, and I'm trying to okay. determine which way is up. So number twenty-one by Matthias. Opening bid, oh, twenty-one dollars. Can I tell you something else? Yeah. The other thing I have lots of vivid, vivid flashbacks to. Mm -hmm. Jambo Java. Yes. Especially with some. Yeah, totally. I'll take a, a foreshortened picture of this so I can get it all. No. How do I do this? <laughs> oh, there, I can kind of get it in this way. I guess I could do like this and then just whoops it. Whoa. My fog just did a weird thing. There. 
Oh, it flipped it itself. Number 21 by Matias Martinez. Acrylic on foam core. Viv, what are your favorite paint Opening colors? Bid, $21. What was that? What are your favorite paint colors? Um, I would have to say it's uh, teal and more teal and aquamarine. <laughs> I like to use a little bit of teal as my kind of, um, I got like secret weapons that I put in at the end. Uh-huh. I never paint with teal. I'll put a little bit of teal in at the end for punch. Ah. Yeah, it's my favorite. But I do like to have a really expensive, nice tube of teal. And that's actually how mm -hmm. like the way I manage my paints is I'll use inexpensive paints. And then I'll have like a, a like just a crazy Windsor Newton teal that I can pull on when I want to. Right. The last few finishing strokes. Look on the topic of teal. Look at those eyes. This is a painting. Ooh, by those are beautiful teal right there. Right. Wow. And then also, Rich has been teaching a photo class. Yeah. Notice the Rembrandt lighting so on her I'm cheek. Also using Rembrandt lighting in my painting. Ah. So Rich has been teaching photo class, and um, hi, mom. And um. And this is what I learned when there's the triangle of light on the cheek. This is called Rembrandt lighting in portrait photography. Nice. Have you ever studied photography, Vivian? I did for a little bit. Well, I did. My dad's a photographer, hey? Um, oh. So in college, I did take it because you have to take it for graphic design. Nice. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, learn composition and all that. So... Um, I did take it, uh, but it was more basic. I think a lot of my knowledge of it, though, came more from my dad and, and his making us sit through, like, cards that said F-stop 1, F-stop 1.5, F-stop 2. Well, you know, took forever. Yeah. And, uh, but, yeah, composition was more the important part when I took it in college. Well, it's a funny thing because the curriculum still asks for a lot of attention to the f-stops, but um, it's kind of antiquated that you don't really um, you don't need to know a lot of those things anymore. If you if you uh, you can, I'm not putting down knowing the basics and the and the history. Yeah. Or, if, you know, if a kid that can't uh, sit in the f-stops for half an hour um, ends up shooting some decent photos in my class, they tend to still flourish. Right? So, and what I find is the kids that are interested in photography, a lot of them sort of figured out their um, camera. Long before you take the course. Yeah, I right. believe so that. Kids that will never get it because they're just not interested. Yeah. And the kids that did it on their own. So I find wasting too much time on those specifics a little counterproductive. Yeah, I can imagine. But I, I had uh, one of my kids flew a drone over top of. Uh... Hey, bud. The school. Flew a drone Here's the head of the people. <laughs> you on the screen. Hi, little man. <laughs> Hi. I gotta go let the dog right, in. Before, I'll be right back. back. To with this, Felix? Yeah. Good thing you dressed, hey. So number 24 is What's by going on? Ega. A really, I'm trying to get that. Look at the purples and the greens in this. This is really lovely. Reminds me of like sea foam What's on that the beach story? or something. So Ega is moving to BC. So right. if um, this goes, we can send her off with some, some spending money. Okay? So this is opening bid, uh, $25. All right, nice. And then probably mom's going to send me to bed. Why don't you challenge your mom to yeah, race around the block? Aga. Yeah. <laughs> See if she can join the hedgehog club. What about fireworks? Oh. So no fireworks either? 
Galen's here. Remember Galen put off fireworks? What? Remember Galen put off fireworks for us? Yes. He's here. And is he still talking to Oliver too? Oliver's left. Oh, yeah, Oliver too. Let's say Galen hi. might be talking. Look pretty muscly in that t-shirt. <laughs> And number 25. Number 25 is by Andrew Farley. He's got a couple of cool abstract pieces here. Number 25, Andrew Farley. Opening bid is $35. So aerosol, acrylic, inks. Number 25, opening bid, $35. Uh-oh. What? No, it's just an update. Did I ever tell you when I was in grade five? Oh, my God. Just kidding. <laughs> Jess is like, you're the one that solves problems. <laughs> <laughs> Here, oh God! Uh, I haven't been like feeling what? so greatly. You're not feeling great. Right. How can I help you? Well, this is nice. You're just so positive. It makes me feel better. Number twenty-five by Andrew Farley. Acrylic. Now I'm chewing and talking. All right. Him. Ah, it's all good. For some reason, every single time you say Andrew Farley, I want to say Mo Marley, Bo Barley, Man Who Man, Bo Farley, Mo Marley. <laughs> Doesn't it sound like his name is Andrew Farley, Fo Farley, Mo Man and Man and Mo Marley, me, my Andrew Farley? You could do that every time we put up Andrew's pieces. That would be a fun thing. You should actually. Yeah, that's the thing I now. Used to I used to sing that with the kids all the time. Do you know how it actually goes? I think you did it pretty close. David, David, Bo, David, Banana, Fana, Fo, Favid, Me, My, Mo, Mavid, David, mm -hmm. Viviana, Viviana, Fo, Fana, Banana, Fana, Fo, Fana, Me, My, Mo, Mana, Viviana. What is the combination of words that you're supposed to change? Oh, I don't know. They're just, it just sounds like you add the, yeah, just the beginning. Play, yeah. I don't know. It's just weird because, yeah, um, I, I think there's probably some names you can't do, but I, I do all my day home kids. Mm -hmm. Olivia, Olivia, Bobivia, Banana, Fana, Fofibia, me, my, Mo, Mibia, Olivia. Maybe you get to know the names that you're going to get into trouble with, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, you can't stop the kids from repeating the one word you shouldn't be saying. Because... That's how it goes with kids. This. What's the one word? Lovely. We'll get banned. Ceramic piece. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Chuck probably couldn't play that game. No. <laughs> or Chuck was probably not allowed to play that game in in class. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> so this lovely ceramic piece has been sitting here and there's this lovely goddess lady with her chicken on her basket speaking here. of chickens and exactly and no she, but speaking of chickens oh do you have a story flew into calgary tonight and boy are my arms tired um I oh, heard you. that they changed the laws for chickens today today they did yeah i think so oh people have been texting you like, you got bids that's nice I will buy you guys a chicken for your anniversary now. Oh, you guys can figure out what to do with it. Yeah. How oh, about chickens? <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah, because um, that's, oh, man, we love those people, too. We did a, we Back did a, there, chicken like a people. Chicken Lisa, chicken. And, yeah, we, Rich did a screen for them, and they're printing awesome T-shirts. That's oh. cool. That is cool. So, yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe I'll buy a chicken. No, the ceramic piece to start. That'll be a start. 
because I really like this chicken. Look, there's like cool like growth growths on the hill there, like little plants. Oh, this camera is awesome. Wow. And look, she has a little bird on her shoulder too. Oh, just like oh. when we when we How lived in BC, we kept shoulder. chickens. She has a little bird on her shoulder, and then she has a chicken in front of her. I think it's a chicken. What do you think? I think you shouldn't worry about it. I think it's really lovely shapes in this piece. Vanna by Vanna Khaleesi. And the colors are so cool. The yellow and the gray is one of my favorite combinations. Oh. I might have to You know it. that, uh, 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 what's it called? Pantone color of the years are a yellow and a gray. I think, we, yeah, you told me that. That's really lovely. Yeah. I really so like it's that it's cool. Yeah. So I might um, be buying this tonight if no one outbids me because it's been sitting here and I've just been falling in love with her. What is it? This. Oh, I really nice. love it. What's your opening bid? Um, maybe should I, is 80 too much to start? I think maybe it's okay. a reasonable amount for this beautiful sculpture. Because I was thinking I'd love to show the kids like. A beautiful sculpture. A beautiful sculpture, yeah. I love the face too. Look at that, just like one implied eye with the nose there. The simplicity of it. Okay, so I'm going to bid 80 to open it there. In painting some or naming some of my paintings, I uh, actually one time looked up chicken poetry. There's lots of it, just so you know. That's really funny. Chickens yeah. or roosters? No, I did chickens too. I've done chickens <laughs> and roosters. But I, I looked up chicken poetry because I thought I will find, you know, some lines that will inspire me to name my artwork. And it's quite interesting. I could find you guys one. I, uh, uh, do you want me to? Yeah. I shall find one. <laughs> That's really funny. Does that sound like I was kidding? <laughs> no. Uh, Does that not seem like a, a thing we do here? It is absolutely 100% a thing we do here. That's yeah, the thing, right. right? We are spontaneous. It's like a variety show. Very much so. A variety show mainly based on artwork. Poetry is art. Artworks to show up. <laughs> okay, so. Um, so okay you say the next thing and then i'll read a chicken poem afterwards oh no you can go if you're ready you can go do you want me to read you okay yeah so this one is called champion chicky teriyaki a sumer superstar Toss his weight around the ring and bumped opponents far. His shape was very ovular. His wrestling suit was small. So when he bowed to start a match, fans nearly saw it all. That is so good. Like, boy, he had a ball. Well, that's another one that would be really great, wouldn't it? Balls are always you great. Know? I think we should have a ball at the Rumble House. The Rumble Ball. Aww. Okay. Sorry, I was picking out some really cool. Um, so these are all... I guess I could take a picture of all of them, I guess. So they... So, hey, you can do anything. Right? So right? These, all um, original one-off prints. Um, I don't know the name of them. Is it cyan? Cyanotype or something? <laughs> cyanotype. Yep, um, Cyanotype. Is that is that actually cyanotype? Um, so these are all original ones by Gloria, and so they're in the plastic. Wait, I also, spell it. G L O R I. <laughs> My, how do you put up with me? Uh, well, honestly, like, look, honestly, how do you stand it? You're, you're just really funny. I'm cute. Know. Yeah. I'm cute. I'm cute. 
You know what I just had a flashback to? Like last Wednesday when you did that? No. Oh. <laughs> that damn uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Yes, true. We're supposed to think Santa Claus is the hero and he's just a bully. Yeah. You know yeah. what he is? He's the bystander. He should have said something and he didn't. Right. And he knows because he's Santa Claus. Right? Keeping tabs on himself? I don't think so. He's not self-reflecting. So these are all some original prints, and they all have envelopes and their little cards. Um, so we will um, start those out at maybe uh, five dollars each. And I'll um, maybe I'll figure out what to do. I've kind of been putting groups of four up, but um, we'll figure this out. <clears throat> Would you like another chicken poem? Oh my gosh, Sandra just so sent me much. this awesome video. <laughs> is it a chicken poem? Yeah, it kind of is. Is it a chicken? <laughs> let's see, let's see. It's it's um Gonzo doing yoga with his girlfriend chicken. <laughs> of course. Did you that? Is Gonzo a turkey? Gonzo's like kind of a mosquito. <laughs> Are you sure? I thought he was a turkey. Oh my God. A turkey. Hey, who are you talking I guess to he here? would need a gobbly gobbly thing at the underneath his chin though, wouldn't he? He started out as a mosquito. <laughs> Jim Henson just kind of liked the way it went and stopped halfway. That's cute. Oh. You know how I know that? I have a bit of a problem. With the Muppets. Okay. I got a dozen of when to stop problem. <laughs> I have a similar problem with Happy Days. And I don't even really like Happy Days. Uh huh. I was a teaching degree and I had the um, um, biography channel on the whole time. And I learned way too much about Happy Days. Like this. Henry Winkler, who played the Fonz. Uh huh. Have I told you this before? No, no, tell me. He was in a film called The Lords of Flatbush with uh, Perry King. He was in a show called Riptide in the Shakespearean uh -huh. movie that you watched, Perry King. And uh, the kid that played Kelly in The Bad News Bears. Uh huh. I remember that. And Henry Winkler and Sylvester Stallone. And the way Henry Winkler describes it is there was like four actors and a thug in this movie, Lords of Flatbush. Uh -huh. So the four actors were playing the roles of these thugs. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone just showed up on set and kind of walked around like a thug. <laughs> it turns out when he read for the Fonz, they wanted more of a Stallone type. And so every single line that Henry Winkler read as Arthur Fonzarelli, in his mind, he was channeling what would Sly say. Oh, that's funny, hey? Yeah. So the Fonz was based off of Sil Sylvester Stallone. Wow, that's so cool to know. Also, yeah, because Sylvester Stallone has like a, a very particular way of of yeah of speaking and okay. doing things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they, they used to do a little one minute interlude at the end of the show to sort of like say goodbye to the studio audience. And uh -huh. uh, one time they came out and they had no material, so they had the Fonz walk out. He had this idea, and he's like, "I know." So he goes out and he tells Richie, hey, I just got my library card. And um, in America, that weekend, the application forms for library cards went up by 400 <laughs> I believe it. Oh, my God. That's awesome. All yeah, right. I mean, Henry Winkler was a really smart, gentle, sweet man who, mm -hmm. who was thoughtful and did a lot of reading and, and stuff. So can you imagine how neat it would have been for him to have the opportunity to turn all those kids onto reading? 
Mm-hmm. I think that's awesome. Oz, Oz wasn't supposed to be in the show. He was originally the bad guy. And the audience loved him so much, they brought him into the show full time. And yeah, I remember point, reading something about that. Yeah, well, that was a big story because um, they wanted to change it to Fonzie's Happy Days. And uh, Ron Howard said he'd leave the show if they did. Yeah. Because he was feeling petty. And uh, here's another one. Do you remember the original? Did you watch uh, Happy Days? Yeah, I did. I think original, it might have been reruns by the time I watched it, though. Yeah, everybody. But the original theme song in the first two seasons was uh, Bill Haley and the Comets singing Rock Around the Clock. Uh-huh. And then later on, they came up with a Happy Days song. It was like, Sunday, Monday, Monday Happy Days. Monday, Happy Days. Tuesday, I always Monday, thought Happy Days. That sounded suspiciously like Henry Winkler. Ah. But do you know who it was? Who? Henry Winkler. I don't. Huh? It was the Fonz. Oh, was it? <laughs> Sang the, 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 the theme song uncredited. Of course. But that's only interesting to me because I called it. That's one of that's my superpowers. So cool. I always recognize voices in movies. When, when my son is like that, hey? What's that? My son is like that. He's like, where did I hear that voice before? Well, and I swear we spend... Common, don't we? <laughs> yep. Half the show, we spend it like figuring out who's who and what we're, you know, <laughs> or yeah. where we've seen that movie start before. <laughs> yeah. Um, then, then science fiction films are kind of like specific to that too, right? You're like, they're buried <laughs> yeah. in makeup. You're like, I know how that person walks. Yeah. I remember, I know you know. Walk. I know that oh. jaunty late gate. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember that guy's name. He's voiced a lot of video games and stuff, and even I recognize his voice now. Um, I'll find it to you for again, just a second. Hang on, hang on. I'll tell you in a second, and then you'll be like able to name like 10 different things who you've heard him in. Is it the um, guy from um, huh? The Evil Dead? No, I don't think so hang on um so number 33 is by doctor and i like the hit of that that teal we were talking about with the orange and this one is really lovely did you know tom hanks was on happy days opening bid 20 dollars for number 33 mm -hmm. no i could have that wrong actually but i think he was and then number Do you know that tom hanks has a brother who uh does Tom Hanks voices for things like video games and TV commercials. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. His brother makes a living being Tom Hanks. <laughs> 34 is by Doctor as well. Opening bid, $20. Okay. Ooh. How do I do this? Here's something else. I'll tell you another strange story what Happy Days did. Um, uh huh. The TV show is actually based off of two movies. One was, like I said, the Lords of Flatbush. The other movie it was based off was called American Graffiti. It starred Ron Howard. Before American Graffiti, they made a pilot for Happy Days and it failed. And they cut it into a 15 minute episode for another show called Love American Style. And then after Love American Style, they made. American Graffiti, where Ron Howard played almost the same character. The movie studio, studios loved American Graffiti so much that they brought in this director and asked if they could make something kind of like American Graffiti starring a Ron Howard type. And they're like, you idiots. We made this film two years ago. <laughs> and that's why there is, yeah. a, there is a pilot for Happy Days, but it's nothing like the rest of the show. Ah, that's funny, hey? I know lots more about Happy Days, by the way, if you want me to keep going. <laughs> well, I, you know what? I watched it. Words. Like, I could, like, we, we used to watch that. And what came after Happy Days that was, like, always on? I think it was Three's One Company. Day at a time. One Day at a Time, yes, we watched that. My sister loved One Day at a Time. I saw um, Company all in one summer because they did, like, four back to back episodes. 
one summer of, of reruns of Three's Company. And yeah. I've never seen it before. And the summer between grade five and six, I watched the whole series. Nice. Hmm. <laughs> Me too, we matched. <laughs> Okay. I could match. I got one of you. I like it. You're done with the place. Mm. So when we reopen, okay. during the rumble part, I'm cutting it off here. So this area will be sort of a projection studio. During the auction oh. part, I'll have another spot that I cut off here, so people can sit here for the auction. Patrick so Warburton. Off, there's just a chain. That Sorry, what was his name? Patrick Warburton. It wouldn't come to me because I'm one of those, you know. Oh, I don't know the name. But him, he's got a deep kind of voice and he voices a lot of stuff. And he's he's funny because it sounds like his voice always sounds like he's a little bit dumb. <laughs> but he's done the voices in so many. Kronk's New Groove, The Emperor's New Groove. Uh, he's in the B movie. Um the B movie is one of my favorites, by the way. Oh, Rich, I have money for David when you're done. Rich, I have money for David when you're done. So number three, eight is by Toby. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, opening bid. Is a two. Open. Oh wow. <laughs> opening bid. Twenty dollars. Yeah. Show me the money. <laughs> okay, I'll be right. Well, oh, one second. I think my favorite movie is Big Hero Six. Oh my God, Viviana, have you seen Big Hero Six? Oh my goodness. Okay, number three. Uh, yeah, I did it a while back now, but yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I like that one. That's a good one. Big Hero 6. I watched a lot of movies with the kids, so a lot are pretty awesome. Awesome messages. Totally. Jax, are you going to come by for the Saturday cleanup this summer? Oh, yeah. You guys want to join us? Do you work Saturdays on benches? Well, we work whatever days we want to work. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, wow. How are you doing? Are you tired? Yeah. You look a little tired. This is, um... Oh, is that... Yeah. Zena? Oh, cool. Okay. Well, that's like... Things happened all of a sudden. So, oh, that's good. Perfect timing. So we have a few pieces here by David. And we have a few, and we have one piece by. What's that, sorry? Uh, for cleanup? Yeah. We usually, I buy everybody a, a burger at KW. I can't even finish conversation here. Okay, so first of all. <laughs> I'm just going to start conversations and stop them. So this is called She. Oh, no. It's by Stana. So this is one of Stana's first pieces, I think, that she's auctioned. So usually Stana's one of the ones bidding. So this is really cool. Number 39 is by Stana. Do you know where the rest of those t-shirts are, Jesse? They're all hanging up. No, the big ones for me. Redax. The men's was it, Oh, the large. Yeah, I, I heard you say that's awesome. So this is Stan's first piece. So if the girl or Rumble House rumbles, we'd be saying yay and clapping. I don't think so, Rich. The V-necks or the men's? Anyway, number thirty-nine by Stana. And we'd all be clapping and welcoming her in. So number 39. 
that's uh, it's too small. So you can have it. You can go up there. Oh, you made a pink one? That makes me serious. Oh, you can make one of that. Oh, my God. You don't give me some wild stuff. Oh, my God. Whoa. Um, op opening bid, David, for Stana's. Huh? Opening bid. Five dollars. Okay. And then for yours. For usual. Okay. Okay. So opening bid five dollars for Stana's first piece. <laughs> Okay. So now we got three pieces here by David. Two orchids and a beautiful oh, landscape. All right, so number forty. Forty. Number forty is by David Belcour. Late night orchid study. Number forty-eight. So David's been working with oils on board, looking to mimic the style of watercolors. So it's really cool uh, to see a different approach with oil on board. Trying to capture that like fluidity of watercolor. David just told Daxi's boy candy. It's cute. It's I'm hearing only half of the conversations, but they're so cute. <laughs> Is any to take a photo without any glare? How much time is left? About, it's 834. And look at these orchids. Look at this. So we got, wow. Late Night Orchid Study number 50. Uh, it's number 41 in the auction, however. And same technique, trying to uh, use the oils, use different shockers and dryers and all these different um, options with the oil um, to get the really beautiful flowy background, watercolor background, and then lovely in-focus foreground. There we go, number. 40 and 41 of the orchids. And these are both opening bids of $80. They're oil on board. Um, David builds the, the boards himself. Number. And then that number forty one. <laughs> 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 
David Balfour, Oil on Board, Late Night Orchid Study. This is number 50. Open it, $80. And the last one by David here. Oy, 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 there's a lot. And this is number 45. Oh, look at that. Oil on board. Carburn Park, early November morning. Oil on board. Beautiful reflection in the ice. Oh, did I tell you guys? Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> that is gorgeous. Wow. That looks like a photo, actually. I know. From far away. And then up close, you can really see the beautiful paint strokes. And it's really, really magic. So I've got a couple of exhibits. I don't know if I told you guys about my uh, the one over at Arts Commons in... The plus 15. It's um, the theme was cowboys of uh, the Central Am or the Americas. Oh, yeah. And um, I, uh, I did mine on the masks based on the colonial dances that or the, the dances that um, they the, the, the Guatemalans made or created after like colonialism that they have to do with the conquistadors and the they're usually danced at rodeos and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And so I did the masks that they use, and they're, um, the paintings are on display um, in the plus 15. Um, I think I completely forgot yesterday to put a link of the actual <laughs> ooh, salud, <laughs> of the work of um, so that you can do like a virtual tour of them. You don't cool. actually have to go down there. Yeah. So I'll put a link up at some point and uh, oh, you guys totally. we'll share that That's take amazing. a look and then the other one is another one down at south center i uh i'm part of another um local artist uh exhibit down there um oh. there's a area now that they call art corner it's right by the bay in south center oh cool, it's pretty cool. yeah Lots of artist opportunities um, lately. Is... Oh, it's on the second floor, Top floor. just outside of the bay. That's funny, it's the bottom floor. Uh huh. I was just thinking about this the other day. I've actually met bigger stars, but the first TV star or movie star I ever met was outside the bay on the bottom floor. When that area was kind of getting um, revitalized, I was, uh -huh. I was down there because Oliver was acting crazy and he just needed a place to sort of unload it. Yeah. And uh, so we kind of snuck off to the closed section. And uh, I looked over and there was Rick Schroeder's kids right next to me who saw Oliver playing and wanted to go and connect with another kid. Yeah. And, uh, I remember Rick Schroeder had this pained look on his face because he must have looked at me and thought I was about the right age to know who he was. Do you know yeah. 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 Silver yeah. Spoons and yeah. the champ. <laughs> I remember him clearly from the champ. Yeah. So um, I think first of all, he was kind of irritated because his kids were following my kid. And uh, second of all, um, I, I, he just didn't seem to want to talk to anybody. Yeah. And he was trying to get his kids to leave, and they were, like, enthralled with this kind of just an empty, quiet section in the mall that they weren't going to leave. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, when dads are kind of stuck in the same situation, I finally looked over and kind of just empathized with him. I think at that point he was kind of offended that I didn't know who he was because I didn't say anything. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, I think at some point when he finally spoke, 
I said something along the lines of it's Rick now, right? So I think I said I go by Rich. And he goes, no, Rick. And I go, no, I'm Rich. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He, he used to like punch people out for calling him Ricky. Yeah. He has some some issues, I'd say. Well, I was gonna say, um, somebody somebody put on Facebook who's the who's the the biggest star you ever met, and he's not the biggest star I ever met, but he was the first sort of star I ever met. Yeah. And uh, it was right after, right before he had that meltdown at uh, at uh, Costco. Oh yeah. But you know what? I think there's that. There's another. There's another thing he was like just recently going on. Oh, he he donated money to that kid who shot uh, people during the riots. Oh, for his legal defense team or whatever. Yeah, Why? that's not okay. Kyle Rittenhouse or whatever his name was, the kid that shot people. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow, yeah. I think like rich people have a harder time understanding the world we're in right now. I don't mean rich, mm -hmm. lots of nice rich people, but I think maybe like celebrities are struggling to uh, find their place right now. Maybe, I'm making, yeah. I'm not making excuses for it. I'm just saying like, I think there's something wrong in the uh, psyche in the of most people that had every opportunity and don't seem able to empathize with the new world we're heading into, a kind of gentle world. What's going on, Justin? Sorry, I was just reading the name of this. Um, so number 44, a little brush dipper cup made out of ceramics and glaze. Super cute. This is another, I think, in uh, culinarily unusable. But this one's called Macaulay Tolkien. <laughs> this is really funny. Uh, that's cute. Uh, so this is a series of works that are culinary, culinarily unusable. They stem from experimental utilitarian shapes, which should mean they still have uses. The Macaulay Tolkien might seem broken, but the cracks are a normal result of the glazing process. The surface inside is nice and smooth for the care of your brush. So it's a brush dipper. It's called. Isn't that yeah. just what we're talking about, celebrities? Yeah. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. <laughs> They seem broken, but they're tougher than they look. I'm actually kind of impressed with uh, Macaulay Culkin's ability. Is that how you see his name? I think so. His ability to sort of roll with the punches because he seems to get his uh, ad press as well. But um, I like when those people can just sort of thoughtfully say, well, I was a child star. What did you expect? <laughs> right. So this is by Aaron as well. When did I ever promise to be a role model? Yeah. Or when did he get the choice, right? I kind of feel that way about Justin Bieber. I would never defend the guy, but uh, how was how was he developing characters in a person like? Where was his chance to take those dangerous leaps? Right. Yeah. First fist fight you ever had, you had a trained ex-military bodyguard standing behind you saying you better let him hit you. Okay. Wow. Here's a lot of art. Tonight again, beautiful. Um, there's about 15 minutes left, Rich. Don't say it. Should we um, do one? There's no we right now. I'm behind. Paint and then should What's we happening? close down the... You're leaving? chat so we have some time to get set up for the thing and you can keep painting. I don't know why you're talking about painting. Okay. <laughs> so for the last little bit here, um there's gonna be we're gonna turn off the um live feed, this live feed. Um then you will have time to look at the event page. So it's Rumble 419 this week. Um so you can look through all the pieces on the event page. You can share the event page with friends of yours to see what's going on in the auction. Um, and then we are going to start up the live art auction, live art auction on a new stream at nine o'clock. Okay. So I thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for um, Viviana and Ryan and Kelly. We did not Theo. hear from Ryan tonight. Did we turn off his You're mic? You're welcome. Bye. Where's Ryan? Ryan's waving.
<laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. And we'll see you at nine o'clock. Okay, I love you. Bye. All right. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, Miss. <laughs>